Okay, on today's agenda, I have got to get this massive now banana plant transplanted. Banana plants don't have like roots. They have a root ball known as a rhizome. And what happens is, generally the life cycle of a banana plant is, they will take and grow and produce fruit in the same year and after they produce fruit they send up new shoots like these and then you can take those new shoots and split them off of the main rhizome and transplant them into something else and now you have another plant and then once the main stem produces fruit it dies back they only produce fruit one time so that's kind of the general life cycle of a banana plant however in Kentucky the main plant will actually grow two, sometimes three years and never produce fruit. And I know some people that have had banana plants for even longer than that and they've never fruited. So the life cycle in Kentucky is a little bit different just because we aren't a tropical weather that has a long enough growing period. But I have successfully got this to fruit uh, once now. I've had it about five years, I think. That sounds about right. And uh, basically for the two years I've been dealing with cancer, I've not been able to maintain the shoots. So what ended up happening was I got two great big massive shoots and little, two little offset shoots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split off these two offset shoots and put them into one pot. And then I'll probably again at a later time split it again, but I don't have enough pots right now large enough for a banana plant. And then this one right here is going to go into another pot the size of this one. So these two will be in a smaller pot. This will be in another big pot just like this. And uh, let me show you how I've got that prepared. This pot actually used to contain another tree of mine that wasn't wasn't listed as able to grow in this growing zone and i bought the plant and when it come in it looked healthy um in the pot that it was in and it was called a cotton candy aprium but they really don't grow in zone 6b so my thought was i put it in a big pot and i'd carry it in and out Kind of like I do the bananas and lemons and limes and other things that don't grow in Kentucky. But it literally died just a couple months after I stuck it in this pot. The pH was correct. The temperatures were correct. The soil conditions were correct. Everything about it was correct. But for whatever reason, it died. So um, I waited about three years in case that the root ball had some live growth because I have seen trees that appear to be dead on the surface and then the root ball is alive and after they look dead for three three or four sometimes five years they'll mysteriously start growing again I've got a pawpaw like that I've discussed in previous videos I currently have a um, crab apple that did the same thing it actually looked dead for the last three years and then this year it sent up shoots so anyways, in the bottom of this, I've got soil that's about three inches deep. I don't want the rhizome to be all the way down on the bottom of the pot. And not only that, when I first potted that banana plant in the other container, I really had too much soil in it. And as far as too much soil in the bottom, and then that didn't really leave me room to add compost and stuff on the top. So I'm going to do this one way deeper and then I'm just not going to fill it up as much with soil. Not only that, moving around a 200 pound banana plant in and out of your house is not very fun when you, especially when you got to tip it over on its side, drag it through the drawer, stand it back upright. So uh, having a lighter pot will be great for in the future. The tools that it takes to do this. This is a trenching shovel. This is what I've always used. Some people use regular shovels. And basically what you do is you come over to the pot and pretty close to the main trunk that you're gonna leave in the pot, you slice downward with the spade shovel. 
Then you do the same thing for these other two shoots, pretty close to this one. And the hope is that by doing that, you leave enough of the rhizome on this side with its available shoots for it to take in the new pot. And then there's enough rhizome on this one to also keep it alive. So I'm going to try to do this in the pot without taking nothing out of it. This pot's very unstable. As you can see, this tomato plant literally got so large that it's bulging the pot out. And what it's done by doing that, it's also bulging the bottom downward. So I have to put sticks under it to make it relatively stable. But it is not very stable at all. As you can see, I'm just barely moving it here. And the whole thing is wobbly. So that might make splitting these a little bit difficult, but I'm going to try it as soon as I find a place to set my camera. Did I also mention that I apparently hurt my back yesterday? So I woke up, I can hardly even walk, but I got to get this done. And I've got to get it done before I go to church. Okay, I think I finally got all the way through. All right, so as you can see, I pulled this out. There are still roots in it, which is perfect. <laughs> Now, if we hope and pray, the next one comes out that way also. This one's got roots over here on this side where the other one come out that is uh I guess I should have mentioned as you could tell those roots are really shallow so they're not near as deep as you think they are here's a good example that's the whole root ball right there you can see plenty of roots on that one I usually take and lay the leaves on top of these just to kind of like provide some mulch I went ahead and transplanted the first one it's really too big for this pot but I just need to find some bigger pots and I don't have any locally I got that one there but I kind of used it already and uh, I also need to find one for this other one even though I don't have nothing on top of it 
it will it does have a uh, place right there where it'll send up a new shoot and it's got some roots on it that's really all it takes to grow bananas a little sliver like that of the rhizome stick it in some soil and watch it grow and uh there's some other things they have a they have a need for a fertilizer with really high potassium levels and that is hard to find so i got some tricks on that i'll i'll link to some other videos where i talk about it show you what i use um but outside of that they're really not that hard to do you can grow them in pots or outdoors if you grow them outdoors what you basically have to do you have to get bubble wrap um usually three or four foot wide bubble wrap then you would come up to the stem and if you got three foot wide bubble wrap you'd cut this stem off at two and a half feet then wrap it with bubble wrap a whole bunch of times that bubble wrap will keep it alive and cutting off the stem doesn't hurt it it'll grow back you can actually see this one's been cut off numerous times over the years because i have to cut it off to get it through my doorway even when i lay it down i don't want to take a 20 foot tall plant inside if i only have to take a you know eight foot tall plant but i'll go ahead and show you me filling the dirt in on this other one one thing you got to watch is when you plant these you don't go above the original soil level that's really about the only caution that i've got so again i got three or four inches of soil in there i'm going to put this in here fill it up with soil up to the original soil level and then i'm going to add a stake to hold this one in place because it's very top heavy with it being as large as it is and uh, let me get that done i'll bring you back i don't really have an angle i can put this camera where you'll be able to see i wanted to show you this because i think this is kind of unique when i need to stake something up what i take is uh, just blue masking tape and I go sticky side out so sticky side out with blue masking tape I wrap it around this not very tight you want it to be a little bit loose you can go around it once or twice if you want to It's always hard to mentally in your mind realize you got to unroll instead of roll up when you're doing this. It's kind of weird. Okay, so once I have that part done, then I go over it once the regular way. So sticky side in and that covers up the sticky side of it. But it allows it to move freely up and down this banana plant. Now the nice thing about this is when this banana plant grows and gets wider, it will actually break the tape off itself if you forget to. <laughs> so that's a nice little tip. Anyways, I do have this planted now. The only thing I really got left to do is I need to water in these two and I still need to plant that other piece of root piece. So that's how I do banana plants. I will take um some dead leaves and stuff and put on the top of this bananas require a whole lot of water daily watering each banana plant one to three gallons of water a day depending on the temperature that is the one thing about banana plants that most people can't be consistent with if you're going to have banana plants you got to water them almost every single day now they will go one or two days without being watered and not die but it does stunt their growth and it could make them not produce fruit so there you go it takes a whole lot of fruit and a whole lot of potassium to make bananas you'll learn that real quick if you start growing them anyways thanks for watching god bless you god bless your families god bless your homesteads
back in here on our rhizome root. Let me get this. Back in here on our rhizome root, I mentioned that if you put the rhizome in a plastic bag with water in it, that would be sufficient enough for someone to send that to you so that you could then plant it. Or if you need to buy a few days in order to buy you a pot, that would also work for that. The water in the plastic bag, Ziploc bag, creates a humid environment inside the bag. And then that keeps the root, the rhizome, alive. If you're going to do it longer than just, say, two or three days, or maybe up to five days, then what you want to do is take wet paper towels or newspaper and wrap the rhizome in that. So there's the rhizome. I'm going to wrap it up in this. Try to get as much of the root as possible without breaking it. Stick it back in the bag. Close the bag up. Now, if you're going to do it for longer than, say, three to five days, there's another thing you got to do. Every so often, you need to come and open this bag up. Squeeze all the air out of it. Then, let it fill up with new air. Close the bag. What that does is you're putting the oxygen back in that environment. So, even though you can't tell that root's in there exchanging oxygen or exchanging the carbon dioxide for oxygen it is definitely happening and you kind of need to do that air exchange if it runs out of carbon dioxide it will will die in a ziploc bag if you have it in just a plastic bag just make sure that the paper stays uh damp so that's all i've got for bananas for right now i'll bring you back some other time and show you the status of these ones i just transplanted